So let's start talking about presense networks, what they represent, and I guess the purpose behind using something like a presense network. Now, presense networks are used when we're trying to break down the smaller tasks in a big project. And we're going to look at a very simple example, but we want to think about, you know, when projects become really, really complex in nature, say you're building a house or something like that, um, that we could use something like a presense network to try and find the most efficient way to complete that project. Now, naturally, when tasks are simple, us humans are really good at being efficient what we do. So this example I've got in front of me of like, you know, making some cup of soups, we can naturally probably see what we should do and what order we should do these sorts of th tasks in um, to be able to be as efficient as possible. We're not probably going to just fill the kettle with water and boil it and just sit there and stare and watch a kettle boiling with water while we're not doing anything else because that wouldn't be very efficient. You're very much going to boil a kettle of water and then go and retrieve the cups and do all that sort of stuff um, to be a bit more efficient with it. Now, a precinct network just allows us to be able to visually show, um, you know, the sort of orders that we need to take and what things need to be done before you can commence the next task which is what a prerequisite is in the precedence network so the first step of that is we need to actually look at what these prerequisites are sometimes there aren't even prerequisites but sometimes something needs to happen before you can you know do it like you need to boil the water before you can pour boiling water into cups otherwise you're just going to be pouring cold water into cups and that's kind of useless when we're wanting to you know eat some nice hot soup so we look at this and we look at you know retrieving the cups we don't really need to do anything else before we retrieve the cups i mean we could but we don't need to so we say that this doesn't have any prerequisites however for us to place the soup mixtures into the cups we need to retrieve the cups first otherwise we're not gonna have cups to put it into so we say that we have to do a before we can do b now filling the kettle with water once again we can do that without having to have you know retrieve cups or anything else but to boil the water in the kettle we need to have filled the kettle up first so this has a prerequisite of c and now we look at pouring the boiling water into the cups. Now this, for this to happen, yes, technically we need to have retrieved the cups. We probably need to have placed the soup mixtures into the cups and we definitely need to have filled the kettle with water and boiled it. But we only list the ones that are immediately prerequisites for it. So we list here, obviously we need to have placed the soup mixtures into the cups. That was an immediate prerequisite. And another immediate prerequisite to this was boiling the kettle of water. Now it is true, like I said, that A and C are also prerequisites to this task, but we don't list them here. So the next one, we're looking at adding salt to taste. So obviously we'd want to have poured the boiling water into the cups first. Well, you might not necessarily had to, but we're going to say that we did have to here. So that'll have a prerequisite of E. And then stirring the soup to finish, you want everything in there before you start stirring. And a prerequisite isn't G, uh, like I'm writing down here. The prerequisite to that is clearly F um, if you want salt into the soup. So now we've established what the prerequisites are, we can actually show a visual um, network diagram that illustrates this and we can then use that network di diagram to work out, you know, what um, the most efficient path would be, like efficient way to complete this task. And you'll see as we continue working with these ways that we can do that when it becomes much more complex. So essentially what we need to do is we need to work with nodes. And this is going to be a very much a um, directed network. Everything is going to have arrows pointing in a direction here. So the nodes themselves is just, this is a place that we start. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that because A can be done without anything else being done, it can be done right at the start. All right. So task A right here can be done. And that task A has a time of 15 seconds. So we can put a little 15 here. Task um, C can also be done at the start. So we might draw task C out here somewhere. All right, and it can be done at the start and that one will take 20 seconds. Now, when you start drawing these, I do recommend doing them in pencil because there might be things that you realize later on um, and need to erase things to get the connections right. All right, so I highly encourage that you do draw these 
in pencil while you're working with them. And you also notice I'm doing these egg shape um, nodes at the moment. That's because I know what's coming up a little bit later. Um, and it's just helpful to have egg shaped nodes in there. So anyway, we've got task A and task C. Now for our task A, we need to retrieve the cups. The next thing we do from task A is to place the soup mixtures in the cups. So because that has a prerequisite of task A, we bring it out of task, like the node that task A connected to. All right, so this one is task B and you'll notice that I am using, you know, arrows on this to say that's the next task we're going to do. So task B, what was the time for that? 10. And now we can view a node just here. Now with task C, we were um, filling the kettle with water. So now we've got to boil the water. And what we're going to see here, and this is something I'm sort of looking ahead for to give me a bit of a notice. Um, when I boil the water, that needs to then go to the same node that task B was connecting to because to pour the boiling water into the cups, we require both B and D to be complete. So B and D need to connect to the same node. So what we do here is we draw an arrow that comes down here. All right, and this will be task D and we put the time for it, which was 100, 100 seconds like that. So now what we can see here is we've got task B and task D connecting to the same node, which illustrates that anything that comes off of this node will have a prerequisite of task B and D as the immediate prerequisites. And obviously they also require task C and A to be completed because you can't complete these two tasks without those being completed. So from here, we've got pouring a boiling water in the cuts, which is task E. So we can now draw this out of this node and that has a time of 10 seconds. And then task F only requires task E to have been completed. Well, it sort of requires everything else before E, but we only need to bring it out of the node for E. Um, so that is task F in here, which was 15 seconds. And then I'm just gonna have to do a really short one here because I'm running out of space. Um, but we now have task D, which is stirring the soup. Um, which takes 10 seconds and once we've done that we're finished and we're ready to eat our soup. So what we have here now is a network of a visual representation that shows what we need to complete before we can complete the next thing. Now you can see that we've got this sort of double branch here and that's because we can do this in any kind of order here. Um, so you can see here that um, we could do task C without having done task B A. We can then do task D as long as we've done task C. We don't need task A to have been done yet to do task D. However, to do task E, we need C, D, A, and B all completed, all right? But we say the immediate prerequisites are only the D and B. So it just gives us a bit of a visual way to um, represent that. But what you can also now see here, and we'll talk about something that we call, I might just write it down here. Um, we'll talk about this thing that's known as a critical path. A critical path. And what a critical path looks at is what is the most critical set of tasks that if we were to delay any of these tasks would delay our overall project. So in this case, we would take longer before we could start eating our soup. So if we're looking at this, we're actually looking at which is the longest route from the start to the finish node. And while they're simple like this, we can just visually see it. When they become more complex, we're gonna need something else to help us identify it. But we can see quite clearly here that we're gonna to need to fill the kettle with water and boil it, all right, as the most critical task. Because we can, you know, we can take longer retrieving the cups and we can take longer placing the soup mixtures of the cups if we want while this is happening and it won't delay the project. However, if we delay these two, all right, it will definitely delay the overall project. Now, obviously there's only a certain amount of time that we could delay these um, before that becomes an issue. And that time is slack time, what we call slack time. We'll talk about that later. However, the most critical path is what I've just highlighted here. So if we delay any of these tasks, we are going to delay the overall project of our, tar um, of, you know, of our network. 
Um, and we would refer to this critical path as C to D to E to F to G. So each one of these tasks are critical to our project and what makes them critical is if we were to delay any one of these tasks, it would delay the overall project. So that's really what a, you know, a presense network shows us and allows us to illustrate. However, before we actually move on to the next stage of this, we need to talk about another situation that we're going to start to come across when we work with these or start drawing these presense networks. So let's consider the following project. And I just sort of made this up on the spot here. Let's say that I was, you know, creating a video, a learning video. And let's say that these were the only tasks, they're not, but let's say these were the only tasks involved. I had to turn on my computer, I had to plug my iPad in, all right? I had to create a thumbnail for my video, I had to record my video, I had to edit my video, and I had to upload the video. Now you can see here that like turning on the PC and plugging my iPad into the computer, I, I can do that in any order. It doesn't matter what order I do that in. And creating a thumbnail, well, all I need to have is have the computer on before I can create a thumbnail. I actually don't need to have the video made to make a thumbnail for the video. However, to record the video, I do need to have the computer on and I need to have my iPad in because that's what I'm currently using to create these videos. Um, to edit the video, well, I'll need to have recorded the video because I need something to edit. And then to upload the video, well, I'll need to have edited the video. And I'll also need to, for the sake of this, I'll need to have plugged the iPad in. That's wrong. Um, <laughs> let me fix that. Like I said, I was just making this up on the spot just before I started recording. That should be a C. Um, let's just say that I need to also plug the, uh, so create the thumbnail for the video before I went to upload it. You can actually do that after the fact, but um, for the sake of this, that's what we'll do. Now, when we go to draw this, we're gonna come up with a bit of a unique issue. And I'll, I'll start drawing this and then I'll talk about the issue when I get to it. So we'll have our start note. And our directed networks are actually the tasks themselves. So we can turn on the computer at any stage. All right, we don't need to have done anything else to turn it on. So that's task A. And I haven't got times for these tasks, so I don't need to list these. And I can plug the, um, uh, plug, the, plug the iPad in at any stage. All right, so that will be task B. Now to create the thumbnail, all I'll need to have done is task A. So off the node that task A is directly connecting to, I can now create the thumbnail for the video. So the thumbnail is task C. However, to record the video, I need to have completed tasks A because I need the computer on and I need to have my iPad plugged in because I need to have, um, yeah, the iPad to work on. Now, the issue that we're gonna have here is what node do I bring this out of? Or how do I solve this? Because I need to show on my network diagram that both A and B are prerequisites. Now, if I connect them to the same node, that's gonna you know, imply that task C requires task B to have been done, which is plugging an iPad in. It certainly doesn't need that. But I also can't just leave it like this because I need something coming out of, you know, task B to imply that. So let's look at what we actually do in this situation. So what we do is for the recording the video, I just tend to bring it out of task B to begin with. Okay, so I need to record the video. Here we go. Um, that is for task D. Now, to indicate that task A is also a prerequisite of task B, what I do is I draw a dashed line to it, which we call a dummy link, all right? Oops, hit the wrong button. So we call this here a dummy link. Now, a dummy link is a link that has no time to complete. Okay, and that's something that's really important. All these other no, uh, so these other tasks have time to complete. This dummy link doesn't. However, what it is showing is to continue on this task, I need to have had everything completed before it that's connected directly. And it's also connected via this dummy link. So now you can see that the immediate prerequisites of task D are A and B because of this dummy link. And that's how we resolve that issue. 
Now, the next thing that we'll need to do, um, and I'm probably going to have to erase something in a moment uh, because I've realized. But the next thing we do, uh, we've recorded the video, we need to edit the video. So that'll be task E. And then once we've made the video, we can go and upload the video as long as I've completed task C. And this is where I was saying that it's very good to um, do this with pencil because you can now see that task C actually needed to connect to the same node as task E because task F requires an immediate prerequisite of task E and C to get to our finished node. And that is how we would draw the network diagram of what I've got. Now, just some common questions that I probably get um, with this is, does it matter if I drew this in a different shape? So for example, like let's say I had B come out here and then C for some reason went over there. Uh, so it came out here and D was in the middle. Like The answer is no, it's the connections that matter. All right, you can draw the same network and have them look in, you know, in different shapes but it's the connections of what connects to what that's most important when you're drawing these uh, networks. So they're the two sort of situations to be aware of. Some of these will have dummy links, some of them won't, uh, but they use to try and illustrate a project that we're going to complete and illustrate what the prerequisites for each task are of that project.